Hi there, I'm making a demonstration of the tools uh, for everyday users in Second Life that help you modulate your experience, particularly when it comes to griefing and annoyance by other characters. Um, some of the tools are, are available to every avatar, and some of them are reserved specifically uh, for landowners. Uh, they're the landowning tools that help you moderate who, who gets into your land. Um, and by extension, how you behave uh, or how they behave in that environment. Usually there's some sort of uh, message that you get that tells you, you know, what is appropriate behavior for any particular place. And because there's individual landowners, you have a wide assortment of pacts that you have with visitors. Some places are adult, some places are, you know, good for kid, young people, maybe not kids, but teens. Um, uh, but uh, loaning, owning land gives you a lot more uh, facility to modulate behavior and who has access and who doesn't, as does the grouping system, uh, because you can create tiers of uh, escalation for people who, who have problems within that community. Now that's a lot of uh, human behavior that's involved in modulating human behavior, but there's also a lot of great tools uh, for individuals to simply, with a few clicks, solve a problem that they are personally having, and then if they think that problem is so big that it's disrupting uh, the fun and the experience and the learning ability, learning uh, opportunities for others, they can also escalate that even further up to the point where Linden Lab steps, steps in and looks at st st the statistics of that land. But one of the first things I do when I meet anyone in the world and they start engaging with me is I first very quickly just view their profile. Now, normally, if this character, which is, which is one of my alternates, I have a number of personalities that I use in Second Life to test my products and to s test and demonstrate different facilities that you can find in Second Life and, frankly, many other open sim uh, uh, type grids. But this is one of the first place I, places I look over here is the born date. Now, if the character is under 30 days, this date will be in red which is generally a red flag to watch out. And this is something that's instituted by Linden Labs itself and this particular viewer, which is called the Firestorm viewer. But it's a pretty common occurrence to have people's uh, age show up in red, especially if it's under 30 days. So if someone's misbehaving and they've been on under 30 days, um, I am already my red flags are up. Now, if they've only been, if their character's newly created that day, it's likely that person is a griefer. Um, someone who is not invested in their account, as you can see, this particular character of mine has no payment information on file. That's another red flag that you should watch out for this person. Now this is, I'm being overly cautious here, just because I know there are some people who want to be overly cautious. So it's a great way to at least have initial interchanges with someone, um, to have your uh, skeptical eye looking out for yourself. Um, you can also get a sense of who this person is by uh, the groups they're in. So you can get a really great idea of what this person's all about just by seeing what groups they belong in, if, or belong to. If they're not in any groups, chances are they're antisocial and will exhibit antisocial behaviors, particularly if, again, they've got no pay payment information on file and they have a really young age. Anything over a month is usually a reputable person. But let's go ahead and see, let's pretend, as you see here, this woman's kind of giving me grief as, you know, who knows what she's saying. Now again, this is just simulated, but this is a staged reenactment of how an interchange might go. Now, there are a few things I can do, some of which are pretty basic. Now, if I don't, if I'm offended by the way she looks, and that's perfectly acceptable, everybody's got different standards of behavior, I can just choose not to render her at all. I'm not gonna do that here, but because then she'll sort of wink out of visual existence. She'll still have all her abilities to walk around the world, talk both through chat and voice, and also manipulate the environment around me. Um, but to get a sense of it, uh, just pretend she winks out of existence. There'll be other ways uh, I'll show you that that'll happen. Um, let's pretend that she, she's her, it's her behavior that's bothering, not, not her visuals. I personally have the tools to wink her right out of existence. But let's say her behavior is so bad that she's impinging upon the fun people are having here, and I own 
the here. Uh, this is my land, we'll say, for example. So I can very quickly just go to About Land, and I go to the Access panel, and I can ban her. I can click and ban her. I just add, and then, and then I will add her. Now, I can also make sure that certain people are always allowed. But there are other things that you can do for your environment uh, as an owner of that land, as a god of that land. You can ensure that everyone must have payment information on file, and to do that, you must be 18, so you can click that. Um, and you can make sure that only your group, uh, designated groups are allowed in with no restrictions, so they'll be able to come in. You can also sell passes to your particular land, so people who are investing money and in coming to this particular place are not going to be just throwing their money away over and over and over again. It starts to get expensive um, every time you throw them out, so they're not going to keep doing that. Um, but now let's go to the very, and, and that, is, that, is, that affects the experience for everyone involved. So if I ban someone from this land, none of the people in my land are ever going to see this person on that land. And they'll, and it solves that problem outright. Now if I want to do a more personal solution to this, I can go here and I can go to annoyance. And this is also available from their profile card. Now I can go ahead and block them. And this gives you an example of what they might look when they're blocked. So you'll see this. Now, you can also de-render them like I was talking about before. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that in just a second. But when they're, when they're blocked like this, they will not be able to talk to you. Um, you will not see their texts in public chat. And you personally won't hear their voice if they're articulating something. Right? Usually it's something negative. Now, I can take this a step further because she's blocked now. But I still see that she's there. Sometimes that's, that's a good thing. If you still want to continue to kind of watch their behavior and see if it es escalates even worse. And in that case, you can actually, and then personally, here, I'm going to click on her face. I can raise this to the level of reporting. So when I, when I shoot a picture like this, it, it's not just a picture. It's actually embedded with loads of information. Um, and I can select the category, we'll just say this person was causing disruptive behavior. Now, because we're in a virtual world, the, this reporting structure, which I can write some subjective, my interpretation of things, but what's embedded not only in this photo, but in the data chunk that goes with it to the, the governing body, which in this case is Linden Lab, they'll get the information about who was in the sim right down to where they were in proximity. They can also access a, a snapshot of what objects were in the world. Sometimes an object can cause disruptive behavior if it's got pictures of nudity on it, for example, in a place that's rated uh, 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 G, for example, that's considered disruptive behavior and that can get you banned, in fact, um, just outright. So that's not a behavior that you see a lot of anymore because the tools are so rich. Like this, I mean, if you're, if you're worried about reality becoming a security state where a police state, this virtual world is a police state because the governing body can take a snapshot and rec reconstitute the situation very easily. They can know who was there, what was said, um, and what objects were present and where in the grid the problem actually occurred. And knowing all of that, the, the body of evidence against people who are misusing the system, uh, it, it, it's a slam dunk usually. So people who misbehave get banned. I've never known someone to get banned from Second Life um, just because I frankly don't associate with that people, those people. But I'm sure it happens a lot. But I can't imagine it can be much fun for them because they have to keep recreating accounts. And, and that gets old. That gets old real fast. And they can so easily be banned. Now, again, I have solely just blocked this person for now, but if I want to just get rid of them altogether and never encounter them again or see them or even know of their existence, I can just do this. Let's see. Uh, no, we're under, oh, hold on. I gotta do this. Uh, do not render. see here. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong place. There. Okay. So <laughs> a little bit of discrepancy there. Um, some of those things are for de-rendering 
individual objects. Perhaps you find some shirt they're wearing offensive or they're carrying a flag that you find offensive. Um, you can de-render just particular aspects of them. Um, and then that other facility is for de-rendering the entire avatar. So these amounts of tools, like that character's still there for everyone else, but for me, I'm having no experience with them at all. They're gone from my existence. They have winked out of existence. Now, if other people see me being griefed by this person and they're friends of mine, they'll probably follow, that, follow my lead and just block this person. But the sheer amount of tools available I can't understand why Neo VR, you know, uh, VR Chat, Altspace VR, you know, all these other uh, uh, places don't have the tools to modulate bad behavior. Um, it's so easy. It, you know, if it's patented, license the patent. You're not inventing anything. Get the job done. Either pay the licensing fee or come up with some brand spanking new way to handle this. But the solutions are quite simple. And for you not to implement this is just a sad joke, and it's going to drag you down no, mo no matter what other innovations you come up with outside the context of community moderation. Just get it done. It's so easy. And, and you know what? Build, go into OpenSim, go into Second Life, go into Kitely, and do these experiments for yourself. It's so easy. Do the research, and then do the work. Simple. Get it done.